Welcome back to Investor Intel. I'm actually here today with Adrian Nixon, who's a senior editor for Investor Intel. And Adrian's going to talk about what I think is one of the truly unique subjects we'll talk about on this program. Adrian, what on earth is a space elevator? I'm glad you asked, because if you'd have asked me that a year ago, I wouldn't have known how to answer that. I wouldn't even know what one was. Uh, simply put, um, we normally get a pinch of space by sending a rocket up, so you get very hot and it's very dangerous going up, and then it's very hot and dangerous coming back down again. So not ideal, but there's a three and a half, well no, three hundred billion dollar industry around all that. A space elevator is a simpler idea. Um, actually, goes back about hundred years. But the idea is you put a satellite into orbit and put it into geostationary orbit. And what that means is you have a satellite which is directly above you, always, all the time. Mm -hmm. So if you drop a cable from that satellite all the way down to the ground, in principle, you could climb up the cable and be in space quite safely and cheaply and uh, without all the fuss. That's roughly what it is. Okay, so we've covered what a space elevator is. Where does graphene fit into it? Well, the idea of a space elevator is so simple and seductive that um, uh, it's simple in one thing and really hard in another. And the, the illustration is NASA at the turn of the century, <laughs> which sounds a long time ago now, uh, but about a decade ago, they said um, the investigation of a space elevator is one of their millennial challenges. And they said, is it really possible to build it with today's technology? The answer that came back after a couple of million dollars of feasibility study was, yeah. Most of the problems that you can solve uh, require technology that's around today, apart from one. And that's the material that you make the tether which connects the satellite to the ground. It needs to be incredibly strong. And uh, everything got parked. So the whole project was sort of put on hold because no material really existed uh, that was strong enough and long enough. Anyway, 10 years later, come on graphene. And I'm producing an article in Investor Intel about using graphene for elevator cables. And then these guys at the International Space Elevator Consortium contacted me through Investor Intel and said, um, you know this graphene stuff you've been talking about, how strong is it? So I said, well, it's about 130 gigapascals. Why? How strong does your space elevator cable need to be? And they went silent and then said, hmm, about 100 with all the safety me uh, measures in place. So it's actually 30% stronger than it needs to be if you can make the stuff. Well, I understand you're speaking at a conference about this subject coming up. Can you tell us a bit about that? Sure can, yeah. There's actually a bunch of guys who are ex-NASA, European Space Agency, and a few other things called the International Space Elevator Consortium. They're holding a symposium uh, next week in London. They've asked me to speak at their conference, and I'll be talk talking to them about the state of the art of graphene manufacture. Uh, at the moment, it can only be made in tiny little bits. But there are people out there who are starting to make it in longer and longer pieces, and it's beginning to get to the attention of the big guys. So I'm there to tell them what's going on in the world and how far away it might be. Well, thank you very much for explaining to us. We'll look forward to talking further about what the investment opportunities might be. They'll be immense. Thank you very <laughs> much. Take care. Bye. -bye.